here's a recap of what we talked about in the last video. We looked at weak compositions. They are sequences of non-negative integers. Here's an example. And we have this theorem, which is how to count them. But let's think about how to construct them and how to visualize them, because that's going to lead to a lot of interesting combinatorial properties. So here I'm looking at a weak composition into six parts. So I'm going to have six holders. So here is um, there are six studs here to kind of hold the parts. And now from the bottom up, I can build the parts. So first I start with a three. Okay, so I'll have a part of size three. And then zero, okay, so don't put anything there. And then a, another part of size three, a part of size one, a part of size four, and then another part of size zero. So this is one way that I could visually represent this weak composition. It turns out that representing compositions and the other types of sequences that we're gonna study is gonna be incredibly helpful. So let's look at one of the other types that we're gonna study. That will be a strong composition. So a strong composition looks much like a weak. Often we just call it a composition and we don't use the word strong, but I just wanted to contrast it with weak. So what is a composition? It's a sequence of positive integers. So this isn't going to count. This isn't going to be a strong composition because I have zeros. But here's an example of a strong composition. Well, maybe I'll use blue for the strongs. So example, we could take 3, 3, 1, 4. This is a perfectly good composition of 11 into four parts. So here's an example. I can take four spots, and really what I want to visualize what I've done here is I've just sort of moved these guys down and stacked them. So there's a three, a three, a one, and a four. So I'm basically ignoring the zeros. So you can see I can get here just by dropping things down. But of course, this process isn't going to help me count these strong compositions. And the reason is because I could have had this part of length four up here and it would still drop to the same thing. So there's a lot of overcounting that's happening if I think about it this way. So this isn't a great way for me to try to visualize it. So let's maybe do um, a bigger example and do an exhaustive example of compositions of k into n parts and see what we can come up with. Now here for the strong compositions, notice that if the number of bips, the number of studs that I have total, right, k, if it's less than n, then I can't do it because I'm not allowed to skip spaces. I'm not allowed to have zero. So here, let's do, um, we know that we must have, and maybe that's worth writing down. So we need k at least as big as n in order to get anything. So let's do an example. Let's make our k nice and big, like 5. And maybe we'll keep the same n that we had before in the example that we did down here, which is three. So let's look at all the ways that we can write a sequence of positive numbers that add up to five, and I only get three numbers. So I can think about what's the biggest number I could put. Well, it's three, because I'm not allowed to put a zero, so the smallest is one, so the biggest is three. So I could write it like this, okay? I could do that, or I could do two, and then I could do a two and a one, Right? Or I could do a 2 and then a 1 and a 2. That's another possibility. I could do 1, 3, 1. I'm sorry, I don't know why that one got so high. I could do 1, 2, 2. And again, I'm generating these systematically in lexicographic order the way that I would tell a computer to generate them. Okay, so there's 6. Is it the same 6 that we found over here? That's one thing we can ask ourselves. And the answer is yes, but how do we see that? And how do we use that to come up with a theorem for the number of strong compositions? Well, let's look at how we could relate these guys across. So we know that this compression idea, while it's pretty powerful, it's not really gonna work for us. And another thing I'll notice is that K here was five, but K here is two, right? That's another clue. So let's think about how I could go from here from the strong compositions to the weak ones. That might be a better indicator. So we'll take this example away and we'll think about how can I turn this strong composition into a weak composition in some kind of systematic bijective way. One way I could do it is just by deleting this column. So I could take this strong composition that I have here. Let's take it, um, it's written up here, but I'll write it again. I could take three, three, one, four. And I could think about deleting 
that column right here. It's a nice thing that I can visually see, even if I can't get the studs to line up. So what I'm I doing, I'm subtracting one from every position. I can do that because these numbers are all positive, so they're all at least one. And the result that I get, well, I might end up with a zero. The result that I get is two, two, zero, three, which you can see these are the lengths of my rows here. And now this correspondence, unlike the idea of compressing these pieces down, this idea of covering up the first column is reversible, right? I know exactly, I have a one-to-one -one correspondence for how I did it. So now we're gonna use this theorem to get the analogous theorem over here for strong compositions. So what we've just set up is a bijection between strong and weak compositions. So let's write the theorem, which is counting strong compositions. So the number of compositions of K into N parts, these are strong compositions because I haven't specified, is K minus one, choose N minus one, a very nice simple binomial coefficient. And what was our proof of that? Again, our proof was really right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the strong compositions related to the weak compositions. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna let alpha one up to alpha n, where the uh, be, be a composition of k. That means that alpha one plus plus alpha n is equal to k and each alpha i is greater than zero. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna consider the sequence alpha one minus one all the way down to alpha n minus one. What is that? Well, it has the same length. This is now a weak composition. Weak doesn't mean you have to have a zero, it just means that you can. This is a weak composition of what? Well, I've subtracted one in each position. How many positions did I have in positions? So it's a weak composition of k minus n into n parts. So remember the way that we counted the um, strong, sorry, the weak compositions, right? Uh, the theorem for that is that it's the n is the same plus, now we're replacing k with k minus n minus 1. Um, oh, sorry, I'm not doing the double one. Choose K, which the, again, the K has changed. This is K minus N. And now to finish the proof, we could just say, well, simplify this. And I get up at the top. This is just going to be K minus one. Choose K minus N, which of course, another way to write is K minus one, choose N minus one. So now we've counted the number of strong compositions as well by taking this really nice geometric way to relate the strong ones with the weak ones in a bijective correspondence.